open Flash. Then click File, New, Action Script 3.0 and select OK. Click File, New, Action Script File, select OK. Select the tab that reads as Untitled 1. Click File, Save As, name it what you want, mine is Dice Tutorial at FLA. Select where you would like to save it and then select OK again. Locate the zipped image files you downloaded for this tutorial and just extract them. Select the tab that reads as Dice Tutorial. Click File, Import, Import to Library. Locate the six Dice face files. Highlight them all. Select Open. Open your library to make sure they are imported. Click the Library tab in the far upper right corner. Hit Control L on your keyboard or click Window, Library. Save your file. Click File, Save or hit Control S on your keyboard. Click and drag single die 001-01.png to your stage. Right click the die image on your stage, select convert to symbol, name it what you want with no spaces, mine is capital D and die movie. Change the type to movie clip, make sure the registration is the upper left corner, select OK. Double click the die image on your stage to open the movie file. Select the Paint Bucket Tool color palette and choose which color you would like your die to be. Mine is blue. Select the Rectangle tool. Draw a rectangle onto your stage. Select your pointer or your arrow tool. Click the rectangle you just drew to select it. Right click the rectangle on your stage. Select Convert to Symbol. Name it what you want with no spaces. Mine is lowercase die. BG, change the type of graphic, change the type to graphic, make sure the registration is in the upper left corner, and select OK. Select the Properties tab, or hit Control plus F3. Select your rectangle in your Properties tab. Under Position and Size, make the X and Y set to 0 so it aligns with the die image. Make the W width and H height 300 so it is the correct size for the die image. Notice that the rectangle left its border. Select it and delete it. It is not needed. Also notice that your rectangle is now covering the die image. We will fix that in the next step. Make sure your rectangle is selected. You could right click it and send it to the back but we will actually need it to have its own layer. Select your timeline tab at the bottom of your screen. At the bottom left of the timeline is a little icon that looks like a piece of paper being turned. Click it to create a new layer. Select your rectangle and hit Ctrl X on your keyboard to cut your rectangle. Select the empty layer, currently labeled Layer 2. Hit Ctrl plus Shift plus V to paste it in the exact spot that you cut it from. Click and drag Layer 2 below Layer 1. Double click Layer 2 and name it Background. Double click Layer 1 and name it Die Faces. On both layers, highlight frame 2 which is empty. Click and hold the highlight and drag it to frame 6. On the Die Faces layer, highlight all of the frames. Right click the highlight select Convert to Keyframes. On the Die Faces layer, highlight frames 2 through 6. Right click the highlight, select Clear Frames, right click the highlight again, select Convert to Blank Keyframes. This was to show you two ways to create keyframes. Save your file. You don't want to lose anything if your computer crashes, the program crashes, or anything else. On the Die Faces layer, select Frame 2, and drag single die 002-01.png from the library to the stage. Select frame 3 and drag single die 003-01.png from the library to the stage. Do the same for the rest of the die images up to 6. Select the properties tab or open properties tab. Select each of the die images you just dragged to your stage and align their x and y to 0 just like you did in step 14.
Don't forget to save as often as you think about it. Double click an empty area on your stage. Select Scene 1 in the upper left corner or hit the back arrow next to Scene 1 to get back to our main movie. Select the text tool and create a text box next to the die. This will be your roll button, so I typed roll, but you can type what you want. In the properties tab, in the top section there is a drop down selection that reads either static text, dynamic text, or input text. Make sure that the static text is selected. Select your pointer tool and select the text on the stage. Right click the text on your stage, select convert to symbol, name it what you want with no spaces, mine is capital R in roll BTN, change the type to button, make sure the registration is in up your left the upper left corner and select OK. Select your Properties tab. Select your text tool again and create another text box. In the Properties tab, in the top section there is a drop down selection that reads either static text, dynamic text, or input text. Make sure that dynamic text is selected. This is where the number of the die that is rolled will appear. Now that we have all of the elements that we need, we must create instance names for all of our objects so that the Action Script 3 that we create will be able to communicate with the Flash movie we just created. Select the dynamic text box, the empty text box. Make sure that you have your Properties tab open. In the top of your Properties tab, click where it says Instance Name and give it an instance name. A general rule of instance names is to have the first letter be lowercase and the name to be the same as that of the object. This object does not have an object name, so you can name it whatever you want. Just remember what you named it. Mine is named Text Result. Now give your roll button and die move instance names as well. Click on the stage. Make sure the Properties tab is selected. Under Publish, type Dice Tutorial in the class. The Flash movie is all set up and prepared. When we run the test movie, control plus enter or control test movie test, everything appears and is in order. Now we need to create our Action Script 3 code so that we can roll our die. You'll notice we received an error in our output tab at the bottom of the screen. This is because Flash needs fonts embedded when the text area does not have the Use Device font setting. Double click the Roll button on your stage. Select the text box containing the word Roll. In your Properties tab, go down to the character section. Below family and next to the style is an embed button. Click it, name it whatever you want, and then select OK. This font is now saved to your library and Flash will be able to reference it to use on other devices. Second is the empty dynamic text box. Go back to scene one and select the dynamic text box. In your properties tab, go down to the character section where it reads anti-alias, select the drop down, then select use device fonts. Test your movie and this error should be fixed. Now to get to the coding. Select the tab at the top of your screen that reads Script 1. This is your Action Script 3 file. Currently it is blank. This does you no good, so let's get it fixed. Select File, Save As, and name it lowercase dice tutorial.as. Click OK. Now you need to create your package. With this you'll write you'll type package with an open bracket hit enter and it'll automatically put a closed bracket at the bottom and in there you'll need to import any elements that you'll be using or classes that you'll be using um, the display events and text because we're using the display text and events from flash Next you need to add your class to your package. 
This allows the action script tree and flash file to communicate. Below your imports, type public class dice tutorial extends movie clip open brace close brace brackets. Public class dice tutorial extends movie clip open bracket close bracket. Now you need to add your variables. This will tell Action Script 3 to tell what part of the code will command which objects in the Flash movie. Inside of the Dice Tutorial class, type public var roll button or roll btn public var die mov and public var test re result. Now you need a function to tell your variables what to do with the object. The dice tutorial function adds event listeners to the stage. Event listeners are forms of code that wait for the user or stage to do something and then a new function that is described in the event listener can start. In this instance, we've given, written out a public function dice tutorial and we added an event listener and a go to and stop. The roll button dot add event listener mouse event click roll random number basically this says that the roll btn add event listener tells action script 3 what object to add the event listener to mouse event dot click tells action script 3 that the event to listen for on roll btn variable is a click of the mouse roll random number is the function that will happen once the mouse has clicked on the roll btn variable Another thing that is happening in the dice tutorial function is the random number. Dice move dot go to and stop math dot seal math random times six is telling the die move to stop playing on a random frame up to the number of six. You need a function to tell your variables what to do with the object. The dice tutorial function adds event listeners to the stage. Event listeners are forms of code that wait for the user or stage to do something, and then a new function that is described in the event listener can start. Now we need to code now we need to code the roll random number function. This function has event mouse event in the parentheses because the function is from an event listener for a mouse event. The variable var random colon uint equals math.seal math random times six uses the uint class to assign a variable to a random number. This allows the random number that is generated to, do, to be displayed in the dynamic text box and to show the correct movie on our die. text result dot text equals you roll in parentheses plus random tells the dynamic text box in our movie to display you rolled in whatever random number is ge generated Now you can test your movie, control plus enter, and it should work. If you come up with errors, check that your variable names match the instance name of the object in the Flash movie.
Once your movie is error-free, you can publish it. Select the .fla file, tab, file, publish settings, select which formats you would like to publish it for, tell Flash where you want them to be published, by the output file, name it what you want, and click publish. Click OK to save it. Now you're finished with the ActionScript 3 DICE tutorial.